Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to episode 175 of the show, the, I can't even speak, The Therapy Show, <laughs> Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. And what we'll be talking about in this episode, Bob, is how to help your clients find the god or goddess of themselves in the therapy process. I love this title. Yes, and I, 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 just before I begin, for the people who watch me on podcast, I've got this uh, sort of, I know this yellow, orange and Mustard. On. Mustard. And it's just crept down. And anyway, I'm just rearranging it. But anyway, <laughs> the title. I like the title because what it really means is, uh, it really means how do how do therapists help clients find their real or or authentic part of their self and really in a way that is all what therapy is about yes words, when clients come to see you they have lost or can't get in touch with their real loving adorable real self because they've either fragmented it off to defend it to protect that part of themselves or they've lost the ability to find it again so therapy in many ways is helping people find the authentic real self um, and of course therapists have to be aware that the real well they have to keep in mind that the, the real unique loving part of the client we're going to call the real self here is always there even though you might always be coming or seem to be always coming across the defense systems the clients put up to defend against you reaching that part of it i think that's a really important thing that we as therapists can be reminded of is that it's still there underneath everything. We don't lose that part of ourselves. No. It's just no. covered up by a lot of grief and trauma and life events and all that sort of stuff. But underneath it all, that true authentic us is still there. And I think it's important to remember that sometimes. That's why, like I said, in the title of God or Goddess, if you like. Yeah part of ourselves which is the truly authentic loving caring free part of ourselves which we have defended um against others reaching or in fact in the end ourselves reaching because of what you just said there the traumas the yeah i'll say with traumas that have happened to us yeah See, I see that maybe that God and goddess part of ourselves as the very young version of ourselves that's untainted, that trusts everybody, that loves themselves wholeheartedly, that expresses emotions fully and authentically without the fear of judgment and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, I'll tell you who would agree with you. One of the most famous psychoanalysts of all time uh, and went on to be extraordinarily interested in child development and the developmental way of working. And that person is called Donald Winnicott. Heard of him? Yes. Yeah. 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 Child developmental world. He worked with children primarily. And he 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 coined the terms false self and real self. Yeah. And the real self is what we've just been talking about, what, what you've just wonderfully been saying there. And that we create a, what Winnicott called a, a false self to keep the real self safe. Yeah. And that false self, in transaction analysis terms, about Burn writing sort of around the same time, would may, in the functional model, called the adapted self. Yes. So Winnicott, who was a marvellous 
writer, by the way, coined those terms, which, you know, if you went to the psychotherapy bookshelf and, or if went to Mr. Google and put real self, false self, and you would get a lot of, you know, um, articles, but you'd also get um, some stuff from Winnicott. Yeah. It would be wonderful if we could all reconnect with that younger part of ourselves. And I know that there's an awful lot of, you know, therapeutic work in connecting with that part of us, that, do you know what I mean, that younger self. Mm. That's because the client who comes to see you, and they're, they're only coming to see you by definition because they have problems or feel um, they've lost the real self, if you want, and they may now, they won't say it that way, um, but they've had, usually had such a traumatised history or difficulties or problems that they've protected themselves, mothers, by creating this false self or adaptive self, we might call it in TA. Um, and I think the therapist has a hard job in, in, in the process of, um, how can I explain it? Helping the client trust them in a way. Yeah. That takes time. Yeah. Until they get to that place, the client and can feel safe and secure. Um, you know, cohort writing 30 years later talked about good and positive self objects. In that, in that, you know, in, in that language, unless the therapist can become a positive self object where the client can feel safe, secure, and a sense of trust in the therapist, it's very hard, very hard, if not impossible, to, you know, maneuver the therapist I'm talking about here maneuver themselves around the defense systems that the clients have established to keep people at bay, basically. Yeah. Even if we build up that relationship in the therapy room with the client that enables them to kind of let that younger part, that real self part come out, would they then allow that out outside of the therapy room because i i think as adults we we do protect ourselves against all that sort of stuff i'd like to think that i i'm getting in touch with my you know authentic self that younger part of me a lot more recently but i'm not sure that i would open her up to the outside world a lot of the time no that's why people I'm going to use, we use the word practice in inverted commas uh, with the psychotherapist. Yeah. That's why they in the safe, secure space of the office room or consulting room. Yeah. They can take a trial run with somebody who's a safe object for them. Yes. Yeah. And then eventually start learning to integrating different parts of themselves and um, showing parts of the real self bit by bit so that when they leave the consulting room, they're more able to do what you're talking about. Yeah, because we, if we, we are that authentic person when we're out and about, we do open ourselves up to, to hurt. Yeah, we, we do. And um, thank goodness we do defend ourselves because you rightly said it right at the beginning. The movement away from the real self to the false self is the defense against trauma. Yeah. So this is long-term therapy. This is not short-term therapy at all. This is long-term psychotherapy. And the therapist has to be very patient and has to build up a working relationship for the client to be able to trust them and take them on or internalize the therapist is a positive self-object to allow themselves to be vulnerable in a way which will allow the therapy into the, the sorry the therapist into the relationship. Yeah, and that's long-term therapy. Yeah, that's succession therapy. No, and there's, there's something as well going on for me about 
that even if we allow that authentic, you know, real part of us out, we need to be resilient against the things that the outside world can present us with. But mm -hmm. that's the part of the here and now adult self that we've got as well. So there's like, you know, both of them. Oh. And it's a, it's a developmental process, in other yeah. words. It's a reparative process with the inner child that's been so hurt the way you're talking about. And it will take time. Yeah. Do you think that's what we're all seeking for, is that connection with that inner child? What an interesting question, because, I mean, I'm tempted to say yes, um, that we, we are, we have a sort of, drive to find ourselves to understand ourselves to reclaim what we've disconnected for yeah so i'm tempted to say yes i like the way you said disconnected from then because i i was thinking that we've lost but we haven't lost it it's still no, there disconnected. we've just disconnected from it exactly like you said yeah mm -hmm. and that's really the first step actually which is to help the person connect with different parts of themselves. So they then can connect to other people. Yeah. And that is long term psychotherapy it's reparative psychotherapy. And when I said I was tempted to say yes to the question, do we all desire to um, connect with the real self? It, I said tempted because it's a long journey and we protected that inner part of ourselves so securely and safely that we've even probably lost the desire wow that's sad <laughs> it is for many people yeah but replace that desire with it it's usually a hatred of the self how do we build up that curiosity in our clients then to want to reconnect with it Want what? Well, want to know that it's actually there in the first place. Um, uh, well, by a very first step is, you know, patience. Uh, understand it's a slow developmental process. Uh, model to the clients, um, patience, kindness, a kind attitude. Ha um, the therapist needs to understand that. They have to go through a lot of obstacle courses and defense yeah. courses yeah. to reach the protected self. And the therapist needs to keep in mind's eye that the loving real self is contacted, is contactable. In other words, that eventually the client will allow you in to you know, have a contactful relationship. Yeah. Yeah. But some clients would be so traumatized or so out of contact, the therapist may think it's, that's not possible. But if they give up on their clients, then the clients may have no one. Yeah. See, for me, the work that I've done personally, the visualization really helped me to visualize that younger part of me and kind mm. of oh. make it into a, a tangible <laughs> person, if that made sense. No, I mean, if you talk about that road to help the client reclaim their authentic real self, which is often a younger part of the self, and often called inner child work, often the techniques of getting a picture yeah if you've got one of your younger self or um visualizing um your younger self or writing a letter to your younger self yeah yeah all these ways of helping a person do that type of regressive work is often very useful that type of stimulation yeah and most people working at that level usually have techniques like that, the therapist I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. Because it helps 
in the road of the youngest part of the client reclaim that part would you do two chair work with that i really like what you said i do very much like the technique of metaphor and imagery the problem there for some people is they find that very hard to do now it depends what type of person you've got in front of you if they're so traumatized that they can't even allow themselves to do that or in terms of neurodiversity they come from a place where they um you know maybe on the spectrum and aren't able yeah, to yeah. um find that empathetic empathic or creative part of themselves so we have different processes but to answer your question the technique of um to you know perhaps your older self your older wiser self being able to talk to the younger vulnerable self can be extraordinarily useful as a way of helping the client reclaim the cut off part of themselves extraordinarily useful and it might not for some people work so the therapist may find another techniques like the one you've just said or art therapy or writing with your less dominant hand or you know many creative techniques yeah the person get in touch with or reclaim the younger more vulnerable part of the self in the service of connection yeah because once they can start doing that eventually they may be able to do that externally with another person it's really interesting it's like you said though bob it is deep it's it's deep rooted stuff isn't it it's reparative developmental psychotherapy yeah it's a million miles away from cbt yes now yeah. that doesn't mean that cpt hasn't got its place like developmental reparative therapy hasn't got its place so we're into a different ball game some people want different things as we're talking about we're talking about reclaiming the authentic self and often inner child work is extraordinarily useful yeah has, has that always been around the inner child work or is that something that is more recent well if we go back to winnicott i was talking about who was a psychoanalyst in the 1950s who developed a lot of work in i think the previous uh, title of the last podcast but i'm not quite sure separation and individuation um he was around with margaret marler and then wrote extensively about um working uh, ch in child developmental terms and talked about you know clients reclaim reclaiming their inner child and that was the 1950s wow so it's been around a long time yeah then. 1960s he had the development of many therapies like transaction analysis with the you know, idea of a free part of the self uh, gestalt psychotherapy tremendous work around interruptions to contact and in working with two chairs to find the authentic self then we had the whole movement in the 70s of encounter groups and the whole movement towards um well cohort would talk self uh, positive self objects and many much of the terminology of working within a child was very popular in the 70s and the 80s so it's been the, the concept of what we're talking about has been around a long time a, a, a very early ta therapist who wrote a lot about the inner child i think in the 60s and 70s i think his book came his first book came called homecoming came out in the maybe the early 80s it was called john bradshaw and you probably heard that name because that book homecoming is all about how you work with the inner child to reclaim the vulnerable cut off part of the self and many techniques from art therapy to to chair work to writing to different parts of the self to writing a letter from the older part to the younger part to writing with your 
less dominant hands, all these things. Um, been around for a long time. I've not, I've not heard of that book. I'm going to have a look at that book because it sounds interesting. Homecoming. Yeah, homecoming. homecoming. It's all about coming home. In other yeah. words, yeah, the time. And I love, I love that word in used in this sense coming home because it is it's going back to to our real self and coming home i love that now people have been very traumatized or have had extreme um breaks in attachments so people like like the people you worked with jackie you know yeah. people being fostered who've had tremendous trauma because they've lost significant other people or they've been taken away from significant other people for many reasons usually around protection um they've been highly traumatized have very big ruptures in the attachment system and they will defend to nth degree absolutely won't they yeah from you seeing that vulnerable real self yeah because they are so afraid you know of the process happening that happened earlier in their history when yeah. they lost their significant other yeah so they're protecting their inner child from that possibility of abandonment and also to be in touch with the tremendous feelings usually of grief that accompanies that so you worked and you were a fosterer so you're a person who you know okay i can talk about it theoretically a lot in many different ways but you work practically with those people who often lost contact of the inner parts of themselves um by definition with reference to the trauma yeah they were just very very angry young people that for me it was just you know the only thing that I could do really was containment and consistency and just being there it wasn't ever a therapeutic situation I don't think it was just the consistency well, and containment okay. and regularity well, and maybe yeah. you're describing the prerequisites of a therapy session then yeah, maybe. All the things you just said there yeah. are the prerequisites of a, of a successful psychotherapy because they're the prerequisites of creating a self-environment. Sorry, a safe environment. Yeah. And I always want to say that it depends what you call therapeutic. Yeah, I, th I think it was really difficult as a foster carer because you couldn't get away from them. <laughs> It was personal because it was in my environment, in my home, which is completely different to being in a therapeutic setting for an hour, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, in a therapeutic setting, you you've got you yeah. know, the safety of your office consulting room, you've got boundaries and everything else. But what is very, very similar is what you were just talking about, the being there. Yeah. The creating, hopefully, of some sort of safe container and safe space. I mean, that's the prerequisites for some, for a therapeutic process and it's very natural for these people to be very angry because angry because they've lost a lot yeah yeah i'd like to think that i made an impact on some of the young people that passed through oh. our house oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be absolutely astonished if you didn't i mean i look back at 38 years clinical work with clients and i hope i made a difference yeah and then i think well i know i made a difference so i know you made a difference I know they impacted on me. I know I learned a lot from the experience. Yeah, yeah. So those sorts of people will find it very hard to do work around the inner child because they'd be so afraid of the feelings that will come up and whether they could ever trust the other person again. Yeah. Like the therapist. It doesn't mean they couldn't do that, but you'd have to do a lot of work first to be able to get the young, you know, the young young child to have the motivation to even go there in the first place. Yeah. It's it's a very really complicated relationship to have 
with yourself as well the inner relationship of the client and the client's younger self the dynamics of that relationship is quite fraught as well sometimes it's very fraught and usually people who are that defended against trauma don't like themselves their lowest their self-esteem is very very low yeah so you've got to help them build up yeah their self-esteem in the first place and then you may get on they may be in a place of resilience resilience is a good word you used to be able to do the inner child work yeah and it is it's a self-esteem it's a self-worth it's it's all that the the view of the self and everything it, it it's a massive area isn't it once you open yeah, it but, up yeah yeah it is and it, 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 it it's wonderfully liberating powerful work uh which personally gave me a lot of professional satisfaction and humility to be able to be part of a process where the client trusts you enough to be able to talk to their more vulnerable part of themselves or connect with their more vulnerable parts of themselves is a very uh, privileged place to be in that they actually can do that reparative work and find the authentic or have the chance to reclaim their authentic God in themselves again. Yeah. That's really, I look back at my career and that's really what I got paid for. And it's certainly the area, what we're talking now here, because I was always a developmental reparative therapist that gave me the most professional satisfaction and purpose in life as being, you know, in the terms of being a therapist. Very privileged position for yeah. a client to enable, for a client to trust me enough to go to those places uh, which perhaps have been so unreasonable before. Very privileging. Absolutely. It, yeah. Moving. Yeah. There's, should we as therapists do the work too? Well, now you're into a very big area and maybe it's for another podcast, but I'm going to say what well, I think you know skirt over I'm, the I'm top of say it yes <laughs> i'm going to just say yes and i'm going to say that if you haven't done that type of work yourself i don't think you will be able to do it as a therapist with another person now, that, that is what very, i was thinking that's a very big <laughs> statement and probably need a whole podcast to talk about and many people might disagree with me listening to this uh podcast and that's fine but you, i don't believe I, what I believe is you'll only get so far. Yeah, I think it's, well, I believe it's important to have experienced that yourself, to understand the depths of that. I experienced that type of therapy uh, very deeply, and yeah. I became a different person because of it. Yes. Therefore, I think that process gave me the courage and the ability to be able to go to where I went and to be known as the type of therapist I was. I love that, Bob. Oh. That, that is exactly the answer I wanted you to give. Oh, good. <laughs> so we don't have to have a podcast on this, <laughs> but that's what I believe. Yes, I believe that too. Oh, what a wonderful topic and you know conversation around that the mm. the god and the goddess of themselves yeah their authentic real self which is loving caring and beautiful within and without yeah and we've all got that and what you were saying about uh, you know i wanted the words that were rattling around in my head is that we you know we lose that we don't lose it we just become disconnected from it i'm disconnected yeah and that means we can always reclaim that part of yes. ourselves yeah it's there waiting to be absolutely yeah that's why i became a therapist i love that Mm. Mm. i think it's it just sounds awful doesn't it i'm i'm sure my training involved it and i've touched on it over the you know 
10, eight years that I've been doing this, but I think it's only recently that I've discovered the impact of that truly. Mm. Well, yeah. Good for you, please. Yeah, me too. So until next time, Bob, when we will be looking at how to deal with ruptures in the therapy process. Well, that podcast we're going to go on to is one of the most vital podcasts of uh, all the hundred and whatever we've done. What 175. Number? 175 we've done that podcast talking about ruptures well it's it's very important okay bob until next time see you then bye-bye Thank you. you've been listening to the therapy show behind closed doors podcast we hope you enjoyed the show don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review we'll be back next week with another episode